Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming this afternoon. Um, special thank you to Pastor Amy Spar for inviting me to share my story with you all today. Um, my name is Adriana Campos. Um, I was born in Gomez Palacio, Durango, Mexico. I am the second child of four siblings in total. Uh, I have an older brother with DACA status. He is 26 years old. Um, I have two younger siblings who are U.S. citizens. One of them is a high school senior who's 18 years old, and I have a six-year-old sister, first grader. Um, so I was at three years old when I was brought to the United States. Uh, for those first three years of my life, I was raised by my grandmother in Mexico. Um, my mother was a factory worker in, in many of the factories that were going on in Mexico, and my father was in the United States. Uh, they were both working hard um, to help us meet the needs we had at our time when we were in Mexico. Um, I'm 24 years old now. I've been living here since I was three, like I said, so I've been here for 21 years. Dallas is my hometown. Dallas is the town that I've known since, uh, since I was little. Um, if you were to ask me about my favorite thing or my favorite memory of my time in Mexico, I couldn't tell you because I couldn't remember a specific moment. Um, I may be able to tell you I like tacos. You know, tacos are great. So that's probably one of the things that I can remember the food. Um, but I don't have much memories of it other than that uh, of the people or even of some of my family members in Mexico. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, eligible for the government program we have, which is Defer Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, uh, also known as the DACA bro program. Um, in order to receive DACA, I had to meet certain requirements, um, which includes not being a uh, convicted fel felon, um, not having any crimes, uh, must have graduated from high school or have a GED or, um, or be of uh, Army forces. Um, and I was able to get it and I was able to be one of the few that applied um, and, and that's what I have right now. I have my DACA status. Um, and with DACA, I was able to get my Texas ID, my driver's license, I was given a work permit, um, and I was able to, to attend college as well. Um, I attended Texas Women's University in Denton, Texas. Um, when I was in school, uh, an opportunity opened up for me to be um, interviewed for the outreach coordinator position for Rays of Light, um, which Many of you might know Rays of Light started as a ministry here in Lovers Lane United Methodist Church. Um, but the program and the need for the program was so big that they made it into a nonprofit. Um, and it's an amazing program and it has provided me um, the ability to able to serve the special needs community. Uh, Rays of Light, as I said, is a nonprofit where we provide free respite care for kids with special needs. Um, and we provide those here at Lovers Lane United Methodist and at Christ Foundry United Methodist and at White Rock United Methodist. Um, in May 2018, I graduated magna cum laude with my bachelor's in social work. Um, after graduation, I was offered a full-time position with Rays of Light and I have been with them since. Um, and although DACA has provided me with many opportunities, um, it is not a permanent solution or does it give me a permanent status. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty right now with the future of DACA and what the recipients um, are going to be able to do if it is terminated. Um, if it were to be terminated, I do not know what I will do in terms of job um, or other, in other aspects that DACA has given me the opportunity to receive. Um, both of my parents are undocumented, um, so I also have the constant fear that one day I'm going to get a call where they're telling me one or both of my parents are being held in a detention facility. Um, and with that, my first thought is, what's going to happen to my six-year-old sister? My other two siblings, you know, they're older. We can kind of work together, get our things done, but we do have a six-year-old sister who even though it hasn't been asked of me, I know I'm going to be the one who's going to take responsibility for her. Um, excuse me. I also have to be prepared to know um, who I'm going to call in case that does happen, um, who's going to be able to offer me that help that I'm going to need to either get them out of there and get them here um, with a temporary status or something like that, temporary stay, or if they're going to have to be sent back to Mexico and arrange you know, everything for my, for my sister and my other siblings as well. Um, 
it's not a great fe feeling to live on edge, not knowing how your future will look or knowing how you can plan for your future um, because you really don't know how far ahead to plan. Um, I don't know how my family's future and de independently is going to look like. Um, and there's always that thought in the back of your head that all their hard work could have gone to vain. Um, it can disappear in any second. Um, excuse me. So my parents chose to raise me and my siblings here because there was a, the opportunities we got here, we would not have received them in Mexico. Uh, there weren't very many jobs in Mexico, and the jobs that were available were very low paid, so there wasn't much for my parents to sustain a family there, which is why they chose to come over here and bring, at the time it was me and my older sibling, and then um, have the rest of my siblings here. Um, and it's upsetting to see um, that they don't get to see their family members um, who they grew up with, friends who they grew up with at home. Um, my father's both parents died and he was here, so he wasn't able to go visit them or uh, see when they were in the process of, of dying, being able to say his goodbyes. My mom's um, father died as well. She wasn't able to visit him, um, so she has to deal with all of that here because if she goes, she can't come back. Um, and I just, um, I just want to share with you guys that my prayer for you guys and um, for everything is basically um, asking the government to see my family and other families as people who deserve an opportunity to live in a free, in a fear-free country, um, to continue to, to, they are people who continue to positively contribute into the society, um, to not be seen as a criminal and to be seen as people who have stories who are willing to hurt, work hard and continue to contribute to the United States. Um, thank you so much.